So the next thing we're going to add to our programming language is we're going to add conditionals or if statements to our programming language. So we'd like to be able to do something like this. I forgot a return. So maybe we're going to return X and Y and Z in this or something like that. So I want to be able to have some chunk of code where I say if maybe some Boolean was true, then I'm going to evaluate some group of lines. Otherwise, I'm going to do these other lines instead. So we'd like to have if statements that are something like this. So we're going to show that we can add if statements to our program without actually changing what's going on by making what is a user-defined procedure that does if statements for us. So we're going to use this syntactic sugar that we just added uh, in order to actually talk about how we could perform conditionals in our programming language in this way. The way that this is going to work is we're essentially going to have this if procedure where the way that this if procedure is going to work is it's going to take three bits as its argument. We're going to have the condition of the if, so what bit we were using to, to actually choose what bit we, we wanted to end up with. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to say that if the condition was true, then we want to return A, and if the condition was false, then we want to return B. We take the condition, we say, if that condition was true, return A, and if it was false, we want to return B. This is an implementation of exactly that happening. That's perhaps easier to read than, than NAND. So let's kind of step through to see exactly what this if is doing. So what we're doing is I'm first saying I'm going to have the condition, and then I'm also going to have the inverse of the condition. So here I've got the condition and then not the condition. Let's look at the situations for this if where we want to return true. So we want to return true whenever the condition was true and A was true. So that is one situation where we want to return true. Another situation where we'd want to return true is if the condition was false, that is not the condition was true, and B was true. So those are the only two ways I could, I could return true with this if. I, I said if cond return A else return B, then the only situations where I'm going to return true was where the condition and A were both true, or when the condition was false and B was true. Every other situation, this is going to return false. If I'm saying if the condition is true, return A. So that means if the condition is true, then, then whatever A happens to be is going to be the result. So the only way where the condition is true and we return true is when A was true. On the other hand, if the condition was false, then we return whatever happens to be the value of B. So if the condition is false, we return true when B is true and false when B was false. So there are only two situations. So if we look through the truth table of this, there are only two situations where we end up returning true. That's where the condition was true, putting us into the if part of this if else. And then A was true, so we returned A, thereby returning true. On the other hand, if the condition was false, that put us in the else part of this else statement. So we returned the value of B. So the only way we would return true when the condition was false is when B happened to be true. So this is saying the only two ways that we're going to return true with this if is when the condition and A were, tr were both true, or when the condition was false but B was true. So the result of this if user-defined procedure here matches what that if statement is going to do up there. Yes? Our inputs are always bits. So cond is just a bit. So we have evaluated whatever our condition is, and we have the bit that represents whether it's true or false. And then we pass that into the function with our, our two choices for the resulting bit that we're choosing between. And if that happened to be true, the return value is going to match the value of the first one. Otherwise, the return value is going to match the value of the second one. So perhaps part of the confusion here is that all one bits are the same, are equivalent. All zero bits are equivalent. So even though you never see return the first thing, 
we're returning something that's going to be equivalent to the value of the first thing whenever this bit was one. When the bit was one, whatever the value of the first thing is, that's going to match the value that we returned. When the condition was zero, whatever the value of the second thing is, is going to match the value that we returned. And we guaranteed that by basically just looking at what are all of the situations where the return value should have been true versus what are all the situations where the return value is false. And we're going to write this expression that's logically equivalent to that is what we ended up doing here. Question. Skipping lines of code is not something that we can actually do with our programming model. So we're going to talk about how this is going to allow us to do something equivalent to that, but we just haven't gotten there yet. I needed to set up that we can have this, this if user defined procedure first. Question in the back. So this is the result if the condition is true. This is the result if the condition is false. And if you're in either of these two situations, so the way to read this is to say that one way that we're going to return true is by saying our condition was true and the first thing listed was also true. The only other way to make it so that we return true was if the condition was false and the second thing that we provided was true. If we're in either of those two scenarios, I don't care which, we return true. Now that we have this, let's look at how we can translate things. So we need to define our value for if, which is going to be, let's take NAND up here. And this was not cond NAND cond cond. So this is not cond is equal to doing the NAND of the condition with itself. So now we have the opposite of the, of the condition. So NAND A with not cond. NAND B with cond. Nope, got these backwards. Okay, so we're doing B with not cond, A with cond, and then we're going to return the NAND of X and Y. We're trying to eliminate this if else by using our user defined function instead. So here we're using W as our conditional. So W being the AND of A and B, that is our conditional here. And what we're going to do is we're not really going to be able to skip lines of code with this. So the way that this typically works in Python is you say, if W, then do this stuff and skip the next chunk, otherwise do the opposite. Instead, we're going to pre-compute all of the values that are in maybe the if and the else, but we're going to use our if named action, our, our if procedure, in order to assign our variables to have the right value. So what I can do here is I can say that uh, x from the condition that the if was true, well, that's going to be equal to this or a, b. However, x where our if statement was false is going to be whatever we calculated x to be in the else. So that's going to be and a, b. And then what value should x be? Well, if w was true, then we want x to be the value that we said x should be when it was true. Otherwise, we want x to be the value that x should have been when x was false. Whatever value x has right here was the same as what x would have down here. And now we can repeat this for all of our other variables as well. So we can say, what should y have been when it was true? When w was true, then y was going to be not a. And when w was false, y was going to be a or b. And then overall, we can figure out what the value of y should have been by saying if w is true, then I want to assign to the variable y the value of the variable y true. Otherwise, I'm going to assign to the variable y the value of y false. And then we can do this for z. And we have now a, a function that is equivalent to what we had before. So anytime I have these if statements, I can get rid of those if statements by just using this if named action. So if statements can be converted to these to the if procedure, and procedures can be converted into NAND gates. So now programs with ifs can do everything that programs with NANDs can do. How many get that? Yes. So skipping lines is not something that we can just add in based on kind of the idea for how this would end up in hardware. So if we're, if we're trying to count gates or something like that, 
there's no way that we're going to be able to, in our gate model of representation, say, skip these gates. So that's kind of the, the challenge that we're running into here. So, so without having some way where we can actually skip lines of code or skip gates, actually skipping lines is not something we can do. The best we can do is get something that's functionally equivalent and say, compute everything and then pick which thing to keep is essentially what's, what's happening here. So we know that any function that can be computed with ifs, we can do with nands instead, where each if is going to be one, two, three, four NAND gates.